Hello everyone. The little boy who is annoyed at his baby brother's crying and screaming asks his mother, Mom, where did we get him from anyway? Oh, he came from heaven, his mother replies. Well, I can see why they threw him out, the boy says. Over 2,000 years ago, Mary and Joseph not only believed that their son Jesus was truly from heaven, but also offered him back to God. In any culture, the birth of a child is an occasion that evokes family, religious and social traditions. From the time of conception, the good news is spread among family and friends and several ceremonies are held to mark before, during and after the event with music, songs, dance, prayers and food. The birth of Jesus was also greeted with the Jewish traditional religious practices. Today's Gospel story is a part of the birth of Jesus and it takes place 40 days after his birth in the temple in Jerusalem. It is called the presentation or dedication of Jesus in the temple. The origins of the custom of the dedication of a child go back centuries earlier to the time when God delivered the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. In the book of Exodus of the Old Testament, we read that God commands Moses to tell Pharaoh to allow the Israelites to leave Egypt. Pharaoh refuses to listen to Moses, and so God sends plagues to demonstrate his power and teach both the Israelites and as well as the Egyptians a lesson. He sends nine plagues, each more drastic than the last, but Pharaoh does not relent. Finally, God sends the tenth and the last plague, the death of the firstborn son in every Egyptian home, which compels Pharaoh to let the people go. Moses then tells the Israelites that when the Lord brings them safely into the promised land, they must offer every firstborn male to the Lord. Moses explains that as a result of obtaining this freedom, everyone has to buy back the firstborn male child by going to the temple and offering a lamb, or if one is poor, two turtle doves or two young pigeons. From that moment, the eldest son is fully consecrated to the service of God. As observant Jews, Mary and Joseph also bring Jesus, their only and firstborn son, to the temple to fulfill the law. And they offer up a pair of doves or pigeons as a prescribed alternative to the sacrificial lamb. But Jesus is later sacrificed as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When the sacrifice is completed, Mary and Joseph meet two elderly people in the temple, Simeon and Anna. I would like to invite your attention to these two elderly people. Simeon is described as a righteous and devout man waiting for the redemption of Israel. And the Holy Spirit has told him that he would not die until he has seen the Anointed One of God, Jesus Christ. Anna is an 84-year-old widow and prophetess. She never leaves the temple, but worships night and day with fasting and prayer for the redemption of Israel. When Jesus is brought to them, Simeon and Anna immediately recognize that this child is no ordinary child. Simeon takes the infant into his arms and blesses God, saying, Now, Master, 
you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people Israel. Whereas Anna sees what transpires with the infant Jesus and Simeon and thanks God for the child and begins to tell others the good news. Luke does not tell us Anna's exact words but points out that the message is for those who are awaiting the redemption of Israel. Scriptures do not mention how long these two people have been waiting for, how many children they have received and blessed in the temple, what they say of the children. But one thing is very clear, and that is Simeon and Anna have lived all their lives waiting for the promise of God, the coming of the Messiah. Their hope in the promise of God has been the center of their entire lives. They are very faithful to God and give to God appropriate offerings. While doing all these things at the same time, they wait patiently for the promise of God to be fulfilled. Their prayer, fasting and service in the temple of the Lord are not for their own good, loneliness, pain and misery, but for the people of God. Friends, what is the message for us? Their story is a reminder of the saying, good things come to those who wait. Simeon and Anna are symbolic figures for all those who walk the long road of faith and who wait on the Lord while holding on to their lives. Like the people of Israel, we have also been promised the coming of Christ. Like Simeon and Anna, we are heirs to the promise. Since our baptism, we have begun the long journey to see the face of Jesus Christ. But to do so successfully, we must wait patiently, expectantly, eagerly and hopefully. We must continue to do what we are supposed to do. We must be faithful to God and do what is right before God. We must keep looking for Him. We must keep going to worships and saying our prayers. We must keep reading and meditating on the scriptures. We must keep thanking and praising the Lord in all circumstances. Faith is nothing more than believing in God even when we do not see or hear Him all the time. However, God's promise of redemption does not mean that we will never have problems or suffer from illnesses, rejection or death. Simeon, Anna, Mary, Joseph, Jesus and all believers of God have endured suffering. If we too endure hardships with faith, we will have a great reward like Simeon and Anna. When we see Jesus' face, we will repent for our sins, we will change our life, we will be healed, we will go home to our Heavenly Father in peace, just like Simeon, who knew it was time for him to go to his heavenly home when he has seen the face of the baby Jesus. Amen. God bless you.